We're going through 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and today I want to ask you the question, are Christians hopeless? And of course the short answer to that is lots of us are, uh, in many ways. We're all a bit of a mess. Uh, Christians have just been rescued, that's the thing that's distinctive about them. And so I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, particularly thinking at the moment about verse 13. Brothers and sisters, do not we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. So I guess what I'm really wanting to ask here, and a better way of phrasing the question is, are Christians hopeless in the face of death? Weird question, how are you planning to die? More to the point, will you be prepared? Will you be ready when the time comes as it does for all of us? Some of us don't like thinking about it. It's almost like we don't plan to die at all. And for some it might just be because we, and I count myself foolishly in this bracket, think we're so young that death just is so far away that it, it can't possibly happen. Uh, we figure that we're going to live forever. Uh, and so we perhaps even live as if death isn't even a possibility. That's why I guess statistically lots of us haven't made a will. We figure that we've got plenty of time to do that, we'll get around to it later. And some of us treat the question of God in exactly the same way. We're not sure necessarily what we think about him, but we'll sort it out later when we've got more time to think about it. I vividly remember a conversation I had with a good friend and she had it all worked out. She's planning a deathbed conversion. She wants to go to heaven, but she's got a lot of living to do first and she doesn't want anybody telling her how she should live in the meantime. Uh, she figures she'll be able to sort it out later when the time is right. And she may do. She may have time. But she may not. I did point out to her that she may not have the luxury of a deathbed to convert on. Less than three months after I'd graduated, I met with some students from the university again. A second year called Crispin was killed in a motorcycle accident. And I think for some of us in that part, it was the first time we had gone even to a funeral and it was a huge shock, it was a wake up call. He was just 20 when he died, didn't finish his university course. And we all thought he'd died too early. We went to his funeral and we grieved, we wept, of course we did. We can't take it for granted, can we, that we'll have our three score years and ten and then we get to stand before God. But with Christmas funeral, it wasn't just a sense of grief there. There was also hope, which really brings home to us uh, what Paul is writing about here when he talks about grieve. Yeah, but don't grieve like the rest of, uh, rest of people, rest of men, he says, who do not have hope. At Crispin's funeral there was hope because Crispin was unusual in so many ways. The only student for a start I know who ironed his sheets. But he was only 20 and still had planned how he was going to die. And I don't mean the method of that or anything. And I don't mean that he chose all the hymns and the readings and had the guest list to his funeral worked out. None of that kind of thing. But he had hope because he had a certain and solid hope in Jesus Christ. And so we went to his funeral and we wept and we grieved. We knew we'd miss him. We grieved for his family who'd lost him seemingly so early. But we didn't grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Because we knew his faith was placed in Jesus. Now it might be that you've known the kind of funeral where... People grieve and there is no hope and those frankly can be pretty grim. I take funerals uh, on, on a reasonably regular basis and there are two very different sorts of funeral. One where there's hope and one where there's, when there's no hope, no professed hope and, and honestly the contrast is so different. Funerals where the atmosphere is, is very black. It all seems hopeless because there is no hope. Well, a funeral like Crispin's is very different because of that hope that he had in Jesus. And that hope in Jesus is the key thing. That's the most important thing. It's all very well 
having your hymns chosen, working out what the readings is and what flowers you want on top of the coffin. But if you're not prepared for the most important thing, which is coming face to face with Jesus Christ, then it's like spending your last day on the Titanic choosing what the band will play as the ship goes down. What Paul claims here is that even in the face of death, Christians are not without hope. So in that sense, Christians are not hopeless. Now, what's that hope based on? We know that it's based on Jesus Christ, but why? Well, we'll look at that next time. But for now, let's pray. Lord, at a time when we might feel like despairing, thank you for this ray of hope in the darkness. Help us to hang on to hope, even when we grieve. Amen.